Hi, Room 230. Welcome back to reading. And this is what we're going to focus on today. I can say the big idea of a nonfiction text. We're going to be thinking about these words right here, big idea. What do those words mean when we say we can figure out what the big idea is of a nonfiction text? Well, the big idea or what other some other people might call the main idea is what the author wants us to know. The big idea or main idea is what the author wants us to know. So if you've read a nonfiction book or a nonfiction article like we're going to do today, you can say, I know the author wants us to know this and be able to say it in one or two sentences. Or you might say, the big idea of this article is, mm, and then you're able to say the big idea in just a short one or two sentences. So we have to figure out what is the big idea. Well, today we're going to read an article about Nomura jellyfish. And when I saw this article, I thought, I don't think I really know what a Nomura jellyfish is. So I went to YouTube and looked for a video. And sure enough, I found one. So I'm going to show you a video. And we're just going to watch a few minutes of it just so we have some background knowledge and understand what is this exactly they're talking about. And then we're going to read an article. And we're going to stop after every paragraph and think, what is the big idea of this article? All right, first, let's watch this short video. It's a giant among jellyfish. They can grow to more than two meters wide, weighing almost a quarter of a ton. Drifting through the oceans since before the dinosaurs, without blood, bones, or a brain. Billions are now heading into Japanese waters. Their giant bodies may float gracefully through the oceans. But these jellyfish devastate ecosystems and local fishing industries. No one knows why Nomura blooms are increasing. Is global warming or industrial pollution to blame? Swarms that happened every four decades now strike nearly every year. A battle is on to stop jellyfish from taking over the oceans. It's very difficult to stop there. Wow, those jellyfish are really big, aren't they? And it seems like the fishermen in Japan are really unhappy about them. Let's read this article and see if we can figure out what's going on. So this article that we're going to read today is called Giant Jellyfish Invasion. And there we see a picture that looks an awful lot like what we just saw in the video. A huge jellyfish with a diver next to it. It says here in the caption, a diver attaches a sensor to Nomura's jellyfish. It will transmit the animal's location and other information. So we can tell by this picture and by the title that this is going to be about giant jellyfish. But then there's this other word here, invasion. An invasion is when something that is not wanted comes in, where, uh, in, in a lot of numbers. Like you might say, oh no, my kitchen is being invaded by ants. So an invasion is when something that is not wanted comes in, even though you don't want it there. So we're gonna read this article and see what we can figure out is the big idea of this article. Let's start with this first paragraph right here. Are aliens attacking the Sea of Japan? Not exactly but these gigantic blobs are unwelcome visitors from another place. Called Nomura's jellyfish, the wiggly pinkish giants can weigh up to 450 pounds or 204 kilograms, as heavy as a male lion, and they're swarming by the millions. Hmm, okay, let's stop and let's think. What was the big idea of that first paragraph? What did the author want us, wanted us to know? Well, the author wants us to know that the fish are, the jellyfish are big and they're pink and they weigh a lot. And I think she also wanted us to know that they are not welcome in the Sea of Japan. The Japanese are not wanting them there, they're invading them. So the first 
the first paragraph, the big idea of that is Nomura jellyfish are huge and not welcome in Japan. Hmm, but now we're wondering, well, why? Why are they not welcome? Because they're kind of cool looking. Like, why do they not want them there? So let's keep reading and see what they say. Okay, now we're gonna read this second paragraph here, starting with the words, the supersized creatures. The supersized creatures normally found off the coasts of China and North and South Korea occasionally drift east into the Sea of Japan to feed on tiny organisms called plankton. But now 100 times the usual number of jellyfish are invading Japanese waters and local fishermen are feeling as if they are under siege. This last word right here, siege, means attack. The fishermen feel like they are being attacked. Wow, so let's think about this one. So they're telling us that they're normally found off the coasts of China and North and South Korea. And then there's this map that we can look at. I see what they mean. Here's China, here's North Korea and South Korea, and I can see that here's the jellyfish that they're swimming up the, following this arrow and going up into the Sea of Japan. And then it looks like they keep going and go around Japan. Maybe they're going back to the Yellow Sea, I'm not sure. So it seems like the author wants us to know that the jellyfish are coming from over here, the Yellow Sea, and going into the Sea of Japan. And because of that, the jellyfish are um, invading the Japanese fishermen. The fishermen feel like they are being attacked. Also, there was another important point here, but now 100 times the usual number of jellyfish are invading. So it seems like there's a lot more of them as well. So I'm going to stop and think, what is the big idea of that second paragraph? What is it the author wants us to know? I think if I were to boil it down to just one sentence, I would say that that second paragraph is that fishermen feel they are being attacked by jellyfish. So but now I'm thinking to myself, how are they being attacked? Are the fishermen getting hurt? What does that exactly mean? So let's move on now and read the third paragraph. So we're going to start up here where it says the fishermen's nets. The fishermen's nets are getting weighed down or even broken by hundreds of jellyfish. The jellies crush, slime, and poison valuable fish in the nets such as tuna and salmon that the fishermen rely on to make a living. Mm, so I can stop and think to myself, huh, okay, so it doesn't sound like the fishermen themselves are getting hurt. It sounds like the jellyfish are ruining the fishing and that the fishermen aren't able to catch the fish that they want to catch. And that's a big problem because fishermen rely on fishing to make a living. To make a living see means that's what they do to earn their money to take care of their families. So I'm gonna to think to myself, what was the main idea of the third paragraph? And I'm going to say that in the third paragraph, the big idea is the jellyfish ruin the fishing. So, so far we know that Nomura jellyfish are huge and are not welcome in Japan. Fishermen feel they're being attacked. The jellyfish ruin the fishing. Okay, so there's one more paragraph to go. Let's see um, what happens in that last paragraph. Starting here with the words, no one knows. No one knows for sure what's causing this jellyfish traffic jam. It's possible that oceans heated by global warming are creating the perfect jellyfish breeding ground. Another theory is that overfishing has decreased the numbers of some fish which may allow the jellies to chow down with comp without competition for food. Chow down just simply means to eat. It seems like maybe some of the other fish that eat the same thing as the jellyfish are no longer around. And so now the jellyfish don't have any competition for food and they get to eat as much as they want. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Another theory is that overfishing has decreased the numbers of some fish, which may allow the jellies to chow down without competition for food. For now, all the fishermen can do is design special nets to try to keep the jellies out. Some of them hope to turn the catastrophe 
into cash, into money, by selling jellyfish snacks. Peanut butter and jellyfish, anyone? Mm. I don't know about that last line. I don't know if I would like peanut butter and jellyfish, but that is interesting that they're, the fishermen are having to come up with new ideas for how they can still fish without the jellyfish ruining everything. So I'm gonna stop and think, if I were to say the main idea of this last paragraph, how could I say that in just one or two sentences? And I think what I would say is that fishermen have to figure out new ways to fish. The fishermen are having to make new nets and they're having to figure out how can they keep the jellyfish out of the fish. So these are the four paragraphs and the four main ideas of each paragraph. Nomura jellyfish are huge and not welcome in Japan. Fishermen feel they are being attacked. The jellyfish ruin the fishing. Fishermen have to figure out new ways to fish. Hmm. So that's each paragraph's main idea. What if we could make a sentence that says, this is what this article was about. This is the big idea of the article. What would that sentence say? The main idea or big idea of this article is what? Can you stop and think for a moment? What is the big idea of that article? Ten, you take your smart thinking now and turn and tell the person next to you, what is it you're thinking about? What do you think is the big idea of this article? What is the big idea? The big idea is, what did you talk about? Yeah, that jellyfish are attacking the fishing in Japan. And because of that, what are the fishermen doing? The fishermen have to find new ways to fish. Yeah, exactly. The big idea is the jellyfish are, should I use the word invading? That was it, the, like the word invasion in the title. The, jelly, the big idea is the jellyfish are invading the fishing in Japan. And fishermen have to find new ways to fish. What do you think? The big idea is the jellyfish are invading the fishing in Japan and fishermen have to find new ways to fish. Now this big idea really gets at, the, at what the author really wants us to know. Now, obviously, we learned a lot more, right? We learned about the Yellow Sea and the Sea of Japan. We learned that jellyfish are as big as, weigh as much as a male lion. We learned a lot in that article. So there's a lot more we could say about the article. But if we were to be asked, what is the big idea? What's the main idea of this article? We would say, the big idea is that the jellyfish are invading the fishing in Japan and fishermen now have to find a new way to fish. Yeah, that was the big idea. So well done thinking about that. What I want you to be doing this week is thinking about what is the big idea in the books that you're reading. Remember, you're reading for 30 minutes every day. You can read books that you already have at home or you can use Raz Kids and read there. And while you're reading, you're gonna stop and think and pause and think, hmm, what is the big idea of this book? Or what is the main idea? What does the author want us to know? I'm looking forward to seeing your reading log on Friday. Remember to read 30 minutes a day, write down what you're reading, and then take a picture of your reading log and send it to me because I wanna see what good books you're reading as well. And I wanna make sure that everyone is spending their time reading every day. Okay, I wish we could do this in person, but I'm really enjoying getting to see you guys on Zoom. So I'll see you at your reading group or your math group or at the class meeting this week. And until then, I'll say goodbye.
Bye-bye.